Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A email number 72, I believe. Hang on. 73! There we go. Where I take your email questions, where you can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I will try to answer them here because I don't have a whole ton of time to do it on Strange World because of the phone calls. So let's get right to it. First one is called Hi from Tom in Shelton, Washington. Hi, Mark. I wanted to know your opinion on the truth of the incoming orb system showing on live cameras everywhere in the world. I emailed you a long while ago and asking you then, but no response back. And I would not know which YouTube movie you would have responded to my question on. I'm 63, went to Peninsula High School in Gig Harbor. I have personal live camera photos that I've taken of live camera worldwide off my computer screen. I have a couple thousand in two years time. I have a sun planet interaction reaction filmed on my camera. Many segments now showing more severe and violent looking. So anyway, I want your opinion as truth in knowing, please. Thank you. Or tell me what video you would respond to my question in. Thanks neighbor in Shelton, Washington. And I'll put that in my to do pile, but I think you pretty much answered your question. If you're talking about the whole Nibiru system, look, I was following that thing back in 2012. It's 2018. If Nibiru hasn't gotten here by now, well, then I think it's not really Nibiru. It's probably something else. So there you go. This one's called great job. Hi, Mark. While flying into YVR yesterday, I remembered you mentioning you live in Victoria or Vancouver Island. I was a Navy pilot at Whidbey Island, carrier-based back in the 80s. I'm currently a pilot with the United States Freight Shipping Company. I just flew 1,800 nautical miles with a couple of heading changes in altitude. Pipper, solid, on the horizon, that's it. Flat as flat can be. There wasn't a 380 nautical mile altitude gain. I thought about your podcast with a vacuum engineer fellow. Learned a lot from that. I love your topic podcast. Brilliant and small pe smart people on your shows. You are awesome with them. Great interaction. That's from KW. And yeah, I was in Victoria on Vancouver Island for a year. And now I am down on Whidbey Island until I get to go somewhere else. So let's move on. But I, I, but it's funny, yeah, there's a Navy base on the north end of this island. And I think three movies that I know of were shot up there. Officer and a Gentleman, tied to the Navy, uh, Practical Magic, and War of the Roses. So it's very scenic up in the north end of the island. Also on the south end, but you really don't shoot movies down here for whatever reason. All right, this one's called Globe Reinforcement. Mark, in the staff accommodation of my job, there's a skybox, so I've been subjected to endless TV. However, I have noticed just how much globe reinforcement there is on multiple programs covering multiple genres and channels. Amazing once you see it. Yep, that's from Rob. Absolutely right absolutely right they put little globe all they have to do is put a globe in any just some little innocent globe in the corner of any shot and people just see it and, and yeah if it's in a classroom it makes sense because well there's globes in the classroom right but in a detective's office in a, like a, a very high-end business exec's office all these offices have these globes in them which is really really strange for me uh this one's called good day Hi, Mark. I have watched and researched what your video about Flat Earth discusses. I have followed this material for 10 years. Really, 10 years, because I've only been doing it for three. Uh, off and on and ask one simple question. I agree with everything you've put forward in the final ideology is indeed a beautiful vision that we all indeed need and require very much in this Flat Earth. I have one question left, and that is population levels. As by ending wars, etc., and the final vision of what you have suggested in your video, which I wholeheartedly agree would indeed be a beautiful thing, where will that leave the population levels? Hmm, good, good point. Of this dome earth as it is only so big as I am led to believe. Well, so would be the, the mainstream earth as well. Population still is there at the same time. As a population that thrives and grows due to the vision put forward in your video to which I add and agree with, we must realize that there is only so much room on this rock. Of course, we as a race of beings are now living in tiny areas per hectare. That's a metric thing. 
not here in the United States. So we are controlled. And I did read somewhere we could fit everyone in Australia and the rest of the world would be empty. But over a long enough period of time, of course, ignoring the factors of illness, age, natural disasters, etc. Could this be the reason for the hidden truth as well as the powers that be are now trying to play God or gods? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. As we heading down a future road of Logan's Run, yeah, that's an interesting movie. You guys want to watch an interesting movie, interesting premise, 1976 movie based on a 1967 book, Logan's Run. A uh, fascinating tale. Uh, in fact, I hate to say it, but it, I kind of agree with the premise. I do, because one generation, two generations tops, that's all you need to pull off Logan's Run. Well, I won't spoil it for you. Thank you you for creating a great video to try to answer the questions many of us are now asking and have been asking i hope this email finds you well in peace and love kind regards tony yep yep population would still be a concern no question and we would have to eventually deal with it no doubt i don't have an answer for that except for logan's run uh this one's called thanks hello mark i just finished watching your flat earth clues directed director's cut published on august 3rd 2016 uh, yeah, the, the director's cut was 2016. The original Flat Earth Clues, which is not that much different at all, the, the director's cut was February of 2015. I started it yesterday afternoon. And I watched it until I fell asleep last night, then finished the rest now. I really feel like I need to say thank you to you. And although the thought to call and tell you always went through my brain after each chapter ended and you said your phone number, I am not that brave. So I decided a simple simple send you an email to satisfy my desire to say my appreciation to you mark Sargent, and anyone who has helped you along the way i've just recently started watching youtube videos about flat earth stuff's so like maybe two weeks my brain is still trying to process all the information or maybe it is really that my soul is trying to process the overwhelming sadness about all the years of lies humanity has lived in it's probably both yep yeah it's it's probably both that's what most people run into both happy and sad the bitter and the sweet uh, anyways, I would like you to know that this video is the first I have watched of yours. I will look around for others you have made. I really like your calm voice and tone. I also like how you don't have some sort of music always playing while you talk. Yeah, I don't think I could pick one track because I know that every music, every type of music drives somebody nuts. So even it was just generic elevator music, people are going, I can't stand it. It really makes m it more enjoyable to listen to. Some of the videos I've watched are overwhelmed with background music to the point of making me annoyed. Plus, some turn the music up louder than their voice. And I'm so distracted with thinking why the dude thinks it's cool to, to make his voice almost unable to be heard. But your movie video was super easy to listen to. Thanks. Tomorrow is Easter, so I'll end here by saying Happy Easter from Jenny. It gives you an idea of how long ago this email was. And I will make sure... Then I write back to her and say, because it sounds like she only caught the, the Flat Earth Clues director's cut. And, and well, actually, that was on my channel. So I think I'm fine there. I don't think anyone reproduced the director's cut or maybe they did. I don't know. This one's called Survival Guide, a new Flat Earther. You're awesome, Mark. Listening to Strange World 137 with an air traffic controller. This is such a cool new perspective on everything. Not going back now. Valerie. Thank you, Valerie. And Valerie actually sent me her picture. And that's a nice that's a nice picture of you with a purple scarf and glasses. Very cool. This one's called Chemtrails and Rainbows. <laughs> Sounds like a song lyric. I'm not gonna try to sing it though. Hi Mark. I was driving home from work the other day and I had thought while looking at a chemtrail going across the sky. If planes do follow the curvature of the earth, as we are led to believe, then it would make sense that the extremely long trails the planes are leaving behind them should appear curved. But as anyone who looks up at the sky on any given day can see those lines that go from horizon to horizon appear perfectly straight. I would like to get your thoughts on this observation. Thanks in advance. Jeremy Browning from Mississippi. Yes, and, uh, uh, trails the plane should appear curved. Yeah, you're right. So it'll go perfectly straight. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's what we see. We don't see clouds diving into the horizon. We don't see planes diving into the horizon. We don't see anything diving into the horizon, uh, especially not up in the air. We should see planes crashing optically. It should be an optical illusion if there's a curvature of the earth. They don't. They just fly off into the distance until they become one pixel wide and then blink. They are gone. This one's called Forgot to Send You. Okay. Please include. And it's a picture. Picture, picture. I'm supposed to say picture. A friend of mine says, gotta say picture, not picture. 
It's my diction. It's screwed up. Wow, six. Oh, yeah, Kansas Flat Earth license plate. Yep, got it. Thank you for that. Anyone that has a Flat Earth-based license plate, however you want to see if you can convey the message of Flat Earth, like it's flat or Flat Earth or no curve or whatever it is. You only got seven or eight letters, sometimes six. Uh, try to do it. Try to abbreviate. Try to be clever. I will put it up and you guys uh, know I've been doing the compilation things for 18 months, I think. And so all you have to do is send me your a picture of your flat, flat Earth license plate. I will include it in the Flat Earth license plate compilations. And I've got a new one coming out. Uh, four, four days? Five days? That'll be fun. Well, I got a lot of plates this last month. It was amazing. I got like nine, nine more different plates. It's great. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Hypothesis. Mark, I've seen a number of videos of high altitude balloons at night where the sun peaks the, s the horizon, even though it's dead at night. I've thought about this for quite a while. One video from This Is Impossible showed a 4 a.m. sunrise. Ironically, the sun would have just set in China 22 minutes prior at ground level. I hypothesize that you can visually see the sun's light from any two places on Earth 12 hours or less difference in time between sunrise and sunset at 115 to 130,000 feet. Huh. That's from Joshua. Interesting thought. I like it. I like where your head's at. It's good. This one's called Flat Earth. Good day, Mark. I watched your video on YouTube about the Flat Earth and loved it. I also believe the world to be flat and inside a dome inside water. Regards, Andres. Andres? A N D R I E S. Andres? And last name Low. L O U W. I don't know where you're from, Andres, but I hope I'm pronouncing it right. This one's called Stephen Molyneux, or how do you pronounce that French name? Why I was wrong about Flat Earth. Oh, yeah, that was him doing, you can, his channel of the same name, same name, F. Uh, Sorry, it's Stefan and then M-O-L-I-N-E-U-X. And he was being funny and sarcastic, but he never twitched during the entire video, which was interesting. So, oh, I mean, it'd be nice if he would actually come back and say, oh, no, I wasn't serious, but whatever. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, please forward link requested ASAP. Thanks, Matthew. Yep, if anyone want, wants my survival guide called Empty Shelves, which tells you how to kind of stay afloat during a power outage, at least in the United States or Canada or any really industrialized nation. You can just email me, msergeant23 at comcast.net and just put survival guide somewhere in the title. It's free and it's, I think two megs and it's illustrated and it's pretty good. Should keep you alive for a little while. Hey, look at this. I actually made it to April emails. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this one's called Hey Mark, and it is trying to load, and it is from Steph Renaud, R-E-N-A-U-D, and it says, Hey Mark, can I get a link to the Coast to Coast show? Thanks, Steph Steven. And I did not write him back, so I, I don't know how I missed that, so I will put that in my thing. Yeah, if you guys want a... Uh, uh, the coast to coast interviews remember i can't put them up on youtube because coast to coast out of all the people i mean nobody nobody copyright strikes interviews but coast to coast does because it's technically being interviewed from inside their paywall so they um they they'll strike you so I, and i had to sign a, a release form saying i would not do it so it's so i can't this one's called U2 and Snoopy. Mark, odd something that listened to triggered... Rem wow, that's a great sentence. Odd something that listened to triggered reminded me that the U2 that I saw in Cyprus had a Snoopy painted on the tail fin. Oh, U2 spy plane. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Snoopy because it's a spy plane. Got it. Also, all the American service personnel wore civvies as they were not there. <laughs> yeah, and that's the damn truth. U2 spy plane. Fascinating story. If you ever want to look it up. YouTube, we did not like anything. Look, military secrets are what they are. They're secrets. And we did not even have, supposedly, a spy plane uh, until one of ours was shot down by the Russians. And it's like, oh, yeah. In fact, we called it a NASA plane at the in, in the initial briefings. And, I mean, technically, they're, they're not wrong. But, the yeah, the U2 spy plane 
we outed it and and it was now a spy plane what was interesting though is the sr-71 which was also running at the same time the u-2 was was running the sr-71 spy plane went from inception to retirement and wasn't outed until it was retired uh, what a great press briefing that was. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, it was basically a show-off piece where we're, we're saying, oh, yeah, by the way, we're retiring uh, the, our spy plane. It's like, what spy plane? <laughs> you weren't supposed to have another one. Oh, yeah, 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 this one. And then, of course, the great answer. It was like, well, what are you replacing it with? Oh, nothing. <laughs> it's like, God, love military secrets. Uh, this one's called Top of Paws. Mark, the top... Tro okay, first off, he spelled it wrong that's why i pronounced it top of pause the tropopause starts at isn't you mean troposphere whatever starts at thirty-one thousand feet to forty-three thousand feet i fly it about every other night above this altitude the temperature does not change and we never fly above it the air pressure continues to de decrease to zilch well not not zilch it's not a vacuum uh, for modern aircraft above 80,000 feet. Even then, I don't know, you're still, you'll still have atmosphere. Planes cannot fly much above 115,000 feet. Yes, the air is too thin, very little lift, and nothing to push against. Absolutely right, even with afterburners. From your BCI podcast talking about the Red Bull jump. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Okay, this one's called Survival Guide from anthony hey mark love all your work can you please send me the survival guide in a whole bunch of parentheses thanks for all the great work hope to meet you one day your videos really woke me up and got me closer to god and made my life have more meaning keep up the good work anthony dimitro welcome this one's called cell phone versus satellite please no name or email mentioned if read got it won't do it Mark, if I am in an area that my cell phone does not have any service regardless of carrier, but my GPS is still working, how is this possible on flat earth with no satellites? And I will not give out his name. Uh, that is because you actually are getting cell phone signals. You're not getting, you're not getting uh, the full blown package from the cell phone towers. You're just getting GPS. But I have talked to satellite guys, and they've said there is no way, no way that a satellite has anywhere near the bandwidth. No way to start pumping stuff down to uh, individual cell phones. No, 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 no. Now, could there be repeater planes out there for sat phones when you're out in the middle of literally nowhere where there's no towers anywhere? Yeah, sure, possibly. Uh, but not, not from floating satellites. Well, okay, floating satellites, yeah, but not orbiting satellites. Should make that clear. This one's called, <laughs> title is called, Please Don't Share My Info. Sorry for caps, just want to make sure you see it first. Okay, <clears throat> let me read this. Here we go. Good day, Mr. Sergeant. First day, I'd like to thank you for all your dedicated work you've put into the ideas regarding the flat earth. I'd like to state that I have two opinions regarding the state of the earth we live in. Either the earth is much larger than we have been told, or it is flat. As most of us know, water always finds its level. We also know by playing with magnets that there is a northern polarity and a southern, or more precisely to say there is a positive and there's a negative. So it stands to reason that there is a southern polarity alongside our proven northern. That doesn't mean the earth has to be round. This could mean we are on a large rectangular magnet and we are living on one of the flat sides, but it must have an opposite pole according to all known physical sciences. I'd also like to state that I believe the Earth is stationary and unmoving, that it is pretty lights in the sky are moving around us. This has been proven through scientific studies, which I'm sure you are aware of. Moving forward into my thought process, since water finds its level and we are pretty certain we are surrounded by an ice wall, it would seem to me that we are probably living in a bowl. This could mean the Earth is larger than we know, with Admiral Byrd was telling uh, the truth, and beyond the pole there is more land. If we are living in a bowl of sorts surrounded by ice, then all within the bowl would look and appear flat. What is beyond the ice wall? I don't know. My guess is more land with other inhabitants. I don't. I know most people would wonder why the government doesn't tell us about this. My answer is they don't tell us for the same reason North Korean uh, uh, leader doesn't tell his people what the rest of the world is like. They would rise up. It's all about control. Think for a moment if beyond our ice ring there are civilizations who have cures for every disease. There is no poverty, there is no death, just an idea. I have included a horrible mock-up picture of what might be beyond us. I don't always have time to listen, so if you could reply to this email and let me know your thoughts, I'd appreciate it, especially 
if I have missed something in my idea, it's totally bonkers. No, it's not bonkers. And I've heard this from other people. You're absolutely right. Either the world is much, much bigger where to the point where we are just on a flat, flat part of a much, much bigger world, or it is a self-contained world, which is also flat. Either way, it's flat. So I totally agree with you. 100% that your, your options there. That's good. This one's called my first contact attempt. Hello, Mark. Hope this reaches you. I'd like to share some observations, some being not so recognized. I'm asking if you'll invite me to drop messages from time to time. I use AccuWeather and compare GPS locations. I now use Vostok and Concordia stations. Oh, wow. I can't pronounce half this stuff. Uh, Ushuia, Argentina, Savizikvik, Greenland and Greece, Ford, Canada. Uh, along with my GPS at 46 degrees north near the middle of the Western Hemisphere. It's now 45 degrees at, oh, we'll just call it Ush. And it's negative 45 at Vostok and calculate the difference of 24 degrees times 69 equals 1656 miles. The temp difference of 90 degrees is like a degree change for every 18 miles. I've used the GPS for Anatok. Greenland is 78.5 north versus Vostok Station, Antarctica, Antarctica at 78.4 south. I see that these stations have a winter that is flatlined for six months straight. There are two steps up to summer, two straight summer months, and then two steps back to winter again. And then you, when you see it on a graph, there are sun and moon observations I've been making as regular as the weather and clouds also allow. I'm still trying to figure out what screens or shadows the moon and the sun during those eclipses and wonder if it isn't the same screen that creates the moon phases as well. Yeah, maybe. Hey, you know, I think it's funny that the equinox is called the beginning of spring when it should be the middle of spring to me. I feel that June 20th is about the peak of summer. Is that weird? Anyway, drop a line back and we can interact and share. That's from David Jonathan of Mills. Of Mills? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll write you back and, and let you know I got this. Sorry it takes me so long. Uh, honestly, I, I will keep doing emails as long as I have a schedule that allows it. And then one day I, I you know, I'm, I'm going to have to skip a few weeks just because, I mean, I'm, I'm pumping through them because I hate seeing emails that, are, that aren't addressed in some way or another. This one's called geocentrism, smiley face. Dear Mark, I have lately become interested in the flat earth idea that's out there. I used to laugh it off as ridiculous, but the last while I've done some research on it and I'm starting to think there is something to it. I have watched a number of your flat earth clues videos and also a number of Rob Skiba's videos and many other random videos on the subject. Anyway, I had a few questions for you. What do you know about the flat earth society? Are they legitimate? Or are they actually counter flat earth? Like I've heard some people say. Also, what is your opinion on creation ministries? Uh, okay, first off, Flatter Society, they haven't helped our cause really at all. There was the social media new version, the new wave of Flat Earth members, community, whatever you want to call it, have just outpaced the Flatter Society by orders of magnitude. Uh, do I think they're legitimate? Yeah, I, I mean, they're... They're out there, but they don't seem to stop the trolls. They don't even seem to fight back. So what good are you doing if you're if you're just I mean, where were they when when we started exploding on the scene? Uh, also, what is your opinion on creation ministries? I don't know much about them, uh, to be honest. I have had their article on the flat earth thrown at me as proof of scientific Christians debunking the flat earth. I'm a Christian and believe the Bible. And I do think creation ministries is doing good work in a lot of ways. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. Anyway, I want to keep doing my own research on the subject, but I just wanted to hear what your opinion as well as what people that believe like you is on those two, two organizations. Thanks a lot for your time. Sincerely, Jeremy. All right. And only oh, he left a link, creation.com slash refuting flat earth. So, okay. Let's move on. This one's called They Hide God. Hi, Mark. I recently looked at your video in reference to They Hide God. With the biggest lie ever, I felt that video was very enlightening. First of all, I strongly believe in God, and I'm certainly not trying to condone the idea of the earth being flat, or for that matter, trying to convince other people of that idea, but merely trying to open my eyes. I am, however, accepting the idea that the earth could possibly be flat, and we have been lied to. I recently spoke with my sister and brothers regarding this concept. No comment at all from my brothers. However, my sister provided me with the article, Does the Bible Teach That the Earth is Flat? by Dr. Danny R. Faulkner. I think I know that one. After reading the article, but not in its entirety, I was very confused since I really couldn't find something proving the Earth is a sphere. 
other than making me feel like I'm an idiot by possibly accepting the idea that the earth is flat. Please read the article and tell me what you think. Thank you, Lotus Maximus. Okay, you got to send me the, the link if you get a chance. And this next one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Keep up the good work. Please send me a survival guide. Greetings from the UK. Best, Duncan. This one's called The Pyramid Above the Dome. Let's see here. Mark, I just had an aha moment today. Sorry. When I walked by a public fountain that is covered with a wooden pyramid to protect the fountain during the winter months here in Chicago. I'd walk by it going home almost every day to catch the bus and it's finally all clicked together. The attached photo shows the fountain reservoir that can be easily interpreted as the FE map. The pillar in the middle is the North Pole that can be referencing the Dark Tower theory that people believe there is the center of the North Pole according to the ancient maps that is being guarded from people ever seen. And the wooden pyramid on top of the pillar over the reservoir reminded me of New Jerusalem. Revelations 21.2, Isaiah 14.13, and maybe Ezekiel 42. Here's a few verses that made me ponder on. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's Revelations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's from Isaiah. I've also attached two images I've gotten off Google that clearly shows that New Jerusalem can be a large 2,000 mile pyramid instead of a huge cube on a ball earth. That wouldn't make any sense. Anyway, just thought I'd share that idea with you since my mind is now operating on FE 2.0 thanks to you. Keep up the great work, my friend, Nick. Very welcome, Nick. And Sunday, so I think I can get away with quoting a little chapter and verse. Uh, this one, a little too long, not going to read that. This one's called Semiconductors and Satellites. Hi, Mark, I'll be brief. Semiconductor components are man manufactured in three grades, commercial, industrial, and military. The minimum maximum operating temperature range for the highest grade of semiconductors is negative 55 to 125 Celsius. The temperature in Leo, depending if it is on the sun side or the shade of the earth side, ranges between negative 157 to 121 Celsius. You can see the problem for Leo satellites while in the dark part of their orbits. Their electronics don't work. As far as Pioneer 1 and 2, Voyager 1 and 2, Spirit, Opportunity, Viking, and the other fictional space probes, the temperatures in empty space between celestial bodies is neg negative 270 degrees Celsius, which means once these spacecraft left LEO, their electronics failed. NASA's lies will always crumble under the weight of their own details. Cheers and keep up the stellar work. Uh, I see what you did there. Stellar work. Sincerely, Lane. Awesome. This one's called Flat Earth as the, as at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games in Australia. Mark, look at the attached photo, a screenshot from the BBC coverage of the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games in Australia. Regards, Neil. And I am downloading at super speeds. Oh, yeah. Kind of a flat Earth with all the continents. Well, no, it's really a Mercator map that's been squished onto the side of just a, a flat disk. But yeah, yeah, I mean, that's really what they should be using for the UN map anyway. And, you know, the new UN flag. People say, well, you can't get everything on UN flag, including, you know, um, Antarctica. It's like, no, you absolutely can. I, I include it in my slideshows. It's easy to do, and we've had the ability to do it for a long, long time. This one's called Please Read and Check Out the Links. Thanks, Mark. Want to mention I watched a few videos this morning, which really rocked my world. So, you know, I'm an avid researcher, always looking at the proof both sides as we all should be doing please see the videos i provided below showing videos of the iss being captured in video and still pictures as it flies overhead the detail is quite good so does this mean anything for the flyer community as i'm a bit taken back at the moment if we see this iss fly overhead does this change anything jeff no there's something flying overhead yes are there people on it no not a chance in hell no way, no how. What's ever flying up there? I mean, yeah, is there something flying up there? Yeah, you bet. Sure. There's all sorts of videos showing something up there. Uh, show me something, a video of something docking 
up there. Show me little astronauts float, floating around next to it. Because technically, if you should see the ISS, someone should be able to see those little white astronauts, depending on where they are at the time, shouldn't they? This one's called FE Survival Guide Request. Greetings, Mark. I just completed my ticket purchase for FE 2018 in Denver, Colorado, and would be very interested in reading your survival guide. My mind still isn't completely made up to the exact form of the FE enclosed world system we live upon, but it's become quite apparent that our presented reality doesn't exactly make sense when closely examined. I live in the Denver area, and it's okay to read my email address aloud in your podcast or videos. If anyone in the metro Denver area would like to discuss flat earth theory or various other alternative issues, or is planning on making the trip to FE 2018 and would like to chat, please have them write to me at, and here's the email address for you. In fact, I'll even get out his phone number. Why not? His name is Christopher Massey, and his email address is massey dot Christopher at gmail.com. And he's in Commerce City, Colorado, which I know. And his phone number is 720-633-4513. There you go, Chris. It's all of it. And I sent him a survival guide. This one's also called Survival Guide. Thank you, Mark. Keep up the great work. And that's from Joe Garcia. Very welcome. This one's called YouTube Comments. Mark, sorry for spamming your YouTube, but I felt compelled to share. Thanks for leading me to this amazing truth, Paul. No, spam away. I, pro, con... I'm, I'm not going to deal with the comments anymore. In fact, I hardly moderate my, my own comments. I have a couple of other people that, that moderate, you know, in case they say bad things about them. But I d rarely will moderate my own comments because, hey, I believe in karma. Always have. Always will. This one's called Strange World 144 Won't Play. Mark, Strange World 44, 144 Won't Play on my iPhone 7, but all your other vids, vids play no problem. Did you use a different format? My YouTube and phone 100% up to date. In the comments, others had this issue. Just an FYI, talk to you. And I think I repaired that one. And that was from John Forbes. I think I repaired that one. Every once in a while, YouTube will screw something up. I don't know why, or they'll, they'll change the rules. I always upload them in MP4. And... I know YouTube does a little conversion on their side. I don't know what to. Maybe it's their their particular type of MP4. I, I'm not positive. In fact, they lost uh, sound on Strange World 81 the other day. I mean, that was a while ago. And all of a sudden, Strange World 81, no sound. The entire video. I think that was a copyright issue because I was using copyright music and the software didn't know what to do. So it just muted the whole, the whole video. I've seen that before. So if it happens, if you guys run into any problems with any of my videos, by all means, shoot me a quick email. Uh, and assume that I, I don't know because I've got a thousand videos out there and I don't check them every day, obviously. So just let me know. This one's called Noah Problems Relate to Orion Trial by Fire. Hi, Mark. It's okay to read this uh, message and name on air. Uh, this message for it's actually for both myself and Patricia Steer from Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Uh, Mark, great show, Strange World 144. However, video is corrupted on YouTube, so please re-upload. I heard it live on TFR. Uh, hopefully, 144 is fine. If it isn't, let me know. Patricia, great show, 220. Loved it, and thank you for discussing my NOAA article. I wanted to ask anyone in the FE community... If there is a known problem with video transmission during takeoff uh, up to orbit, my guess is that we have never had any space flight, Apollo shuttle, uh, etc. that has an exterior camera pointed at Earth for the whole flight from the ground to orbit. Yes, you're absolutely right. It never happens. It seems that aerospace engineers know and expect a loss of communication on the way up. The recent NOAA article confirms it with SpaceX launch. When I went back to the Orion trial by fire video, still up on YouTube, it seems they're well aware and expecting communication loss at about 100 miles up. See this part of the video and watch about 30 seconds describing loss of communication during ascent. Yep, yeah, and there's a link to that. And skip again to 417 where you'll see that we lose all communication again during descent. Yeah, absolutely. So there may be a physics reason. No, <laughs> no. It is a production reason. That's it. Uh, you, you you get away with what you can get away with. Look at look at the SpaceX Tesla Roadster thing. It was brilliant. Again, uh, boosters, they followed the boosters down, followed the boosters down, and then they cut straight to the car already floating in space, which is amazing considering the big Falcon booster should have been shown the entire time, and it didn't. 
Uh, let's see. Although one would argue that there are satellites at that level that are functioning, how come they work? However, from a conspiracy point of view, it does provide a convenient reason to terminate the true live video feed and switch over a fake feed. During descent, you lose communication again to get off the fake. Yes, you're absolutely right. Fade to end back on the true live feed from the capsule descending via parachute, presumably dropped from a high altitude aircraft. Yep, 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 yep. To all those. What do you think about this? Yeah, I take care, guys. And that's from Jack, uh, Jack Frost. Don't think it's his real name. All right. So this one's called Curvature. Hi, Mark. I have always been an open-minded person. I recently started to take a look at the Flat Earth idea with an as unbiased altitude as I... Wow, altitude. Attitude as I can. I have seen many solid Flat Earth arguments, but for me, the Curvature full formula is a way to take a hands-on approach to the whole thing. The 8 inches per mile squared formula was something I needed to trust. I started with an example of flying a plane from the North Pole to the equator based on a 25,000 mile circumference. The trip would be 6,200 miles or one quarter of the way around. If I draw a circle to illustrate this, I will see that when I reach the 6,200 mile point, I would have achieved a drop of 4,000 miles, which at this point matches the Earth radius. It seemed like a good way to test the curvature formula. First, I need to make sure the radius fits the circumference for accuracy. In other words, I started by using equation here i needed the radius to be in sync with my circumference and then proceed with the curvature formula once i have a radius based on the twenty-five thousand mile conference i plugged those numbers into the formula with the goal of radius being equal to the drop here's where i think i miscalculated my numbers seem off help me uh, and i'm asking you guys to to help him uh, after some trial and error, the closest I would come to achieving my goal was if I used 6.4 inches per mile squared. Once again, my drop would be equal to the radius. That's the goal. And when it does equal it, you will have arrived at the correct number of inches to use in the formula. That is a way to test the curvature formula through backdoor. The 6.4 that I found still refutes the globe Earth. I'm just looking for accuracy. Please do test this and get back to me. Anyway, I don't have time to test this. Uh, anyone out there can help this guy out, please. Let me know um, and email me and it'll take way too long for me to get back to him. Uh, let's see. Reprogramming of FE followers has begun. That was sent to Jaron and me. And um, let's see. Hi, all. Here's a link to an advertisement. Yeah, that now keeps popping up when searching Flat Earth videos. This is for their moon model. They also have a model of the Earth. It also it seems someone is really trying to enforce a tangible lunar model including the lunar landings with multiple other psychological suggestions in the video. Wow. Uh, yeah, let me see here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump down real quick. A little bit about me if you want to know. Continue reading. Yeah, I'll read this. How do I got into Flat Earth back in the summer of 2016? Here is a taste. I have yet to hear anybody discuss why it is absolutely not possible to get a photograph of the spiral galaxy, let alone calculate its speed of rotation. I started to seriously consider the shape that we would actually see when looking a galaxy. Again, I'm reading as is, guys. I'm not going to correct all your grammar things. Calculating the speed of light, looking at the farthest star and the closest star within the galaxy that you are observing. Now, take into consideration that galaxy is possibly 400,000 light years across. The light from that furthest star you are seeing would take 400,000 years before it reached the closest star to that galaxy. Take your time and think about this. You will realize it is now impossible to have a photograph of a spiral galaxy. The shape would be completely deformed and no longer have the appearance of a spiral. Really? I thought I'd be all relative, but whatever. After this mind-blowing realization, I started searching the web for a mathematician that would be able to explain the phenomenon. With this research, Flat Earth immediately showed itself, and I was hooked. Rick. Hmm. Well, again. Nice, Rick. This one's called... Again, shows you how old this is. Although we're catching up. I'm seven weeks back. Uh, Mark, you're on PewDiePie's thumbnail. Mark, PewDiePie used your pick and Patricia on his new video. Yeah. Biggest channel in YouTube, 60 million subscribers, even though I'm sure two-thirds of them or more, three-quarters of them aren't real. I think they just bought most of the subs, but it doesn't matter. He's still got millions of people, and he's considered very, very popular on YouTube. And he put myself, my head, and, and Patricia's head on his article, or his, uh, his little video. Technically, he's a pr professional troll, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. Can't read that one. This one's called New Zealand Rocket. 
Hello, Mark. I am watching your typed you are YouTube video with some interest, but need to ask your opinion of the New Zealand getting a rocket into space. Thanks, Chris Kelly. Yeah, doesn't I treat that the same way I treat Canada getting a rocket into space? They're just following the Americans. Nobody's going up anywhere. It's they're just blueprinting off off the American program and the Soviet program for for money. That's all they're doing. I had to keep this thing a secret for as long as they can. This one's called Antarctic Circle Sailing Record. Skipper's Log, the Cathar Catharsis 2, Ducola Antarctici. Wow. Uh, Antarctic Circle Navigation. Thought you may be interested in comment to the supposed navigation. Nope. Not going to comment at all. This is called My Curvature Question, live on radio. Hi, Mark. I hope you're well, mate, since I spoke with you. Strange World two weeks ago, I've had three blokes across Australia email me and call me. Love it. So our national radio station called Triple J has a weekly segment with Dr. Carl Kruzelnicki. Krul, Krul, Kruzelnicki. And he is the Neil deGrasse Tyson of Australia. Not with that name, he's not. He takes calls, Dr. Kruz, <laughs> that's what I call him. He takes calls about absolutely anything, and he's miraculous. He has the answers. I finally got through to him after the producer with a different question. The video says the rest. All the best, mate. And you know what? I will download that because I haven't yet. I am so sorry. That's from Lincoln Sharp. And this one's called Survival Guide Request. Thank you so much for the info. I feel like the heliocentric model is really just a grand attempt at forever installing the Egyptian sun cult as Earth's official religion. Your shows about the Masons and the flat enclosed Earth and the NASA Masonic connections are compelling. I've been into reality since about the February of 2003. Building 6 and 7 at World Trade Center would finally made me wake up and pay attention. I took your Flat Earth Challenge a few months ago and realized I could I also couldn't prove the globe is reality. My current thinking mostly aligns with Hebrew cosmology as laid out in the Bible. The Masons and fellow travelers like Jesuits are hiding God's creation and pointing us to Lucifer and declaring it science. I especially look forward to hearing you and Patricia Steer speak in Denver. You two are both really great speakers and you both do a great job on YouTube. Keep up the good fight and may your 2018 be most fruitful with warmest regard, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Nice letter. This one's called Elon Musk Tesla Space Hoax. Mark, love your work. I wrote a paper exposing the Tesla in space hoax. Let me know if you can use it so I can watch your video. The truth is plain. That's from Greg. And I will take a look as soon as I get a chance. This one's called Art Imitating Life. Hey, Mark, I thought I would send this along as you seem to be a movie buff. I had seen on television last night. I really wasn't watching, though. I had it on the background as I was checking my YouTube subscriptions. Johnny Depp's movie, Transcendence. As on and close to the end, when I saw something I never caught before, at the end of the movie, after they upload the virus, everything starts to reboot. There's a shot of a city skyline, and all the lights in the building go out for maybe three or four phases, leaving the moon as the only thing lit. Then the moon goes out as it was part of the grid. Hmm, what do you think? Do they know something or just an innocent funny idea added to see who would catch it? But it's from Post Turtle. And I don't know, I'm gonna have to watch the end of that again just, just to check it out. That's, that's an interesting, you know, it sounds like a little writer's jab at the end, you know, sort of a matrix nod, hard to say. This one's called ISS Amateur Astronomer Videos. Mark, I wrote you a few days ago. I'd really like your response. <laughs> yeah, a few days ago. On how we can see the ISS from Earth. Oh, boy. It's clearly depicted from the videos I sent you. Look, I'm a flat earther, but I have questions. This is a big one. Does this mean gravity does exist? I just Maybe it's an object NASA sent up, but it has no crew. There you go. That's probably a little better. Now you're getting somewhere. I don't know, but please, I'm looking for answers and really would like your response on this. We're all a community trying to figure this out. Uh, so all our input is vital to solve these mysteries. Please respond. Thanks, Jeff Go. Jeff, there are plenty of videos out there looking, dealing with the ISS. Just type in Flat Earth ISS into YouTube. There are tons of videos along this, on these lines. You don't need me to, to solve this for you. This one's called April 6, 2018, Edmonton. Today and often we are colder than Antarctica. Hope the ice is gone for the conference. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, I would think so. Edmonton, Canada in June should be fine. We'll be okay. This one's called YouTube Google Change Flatter Search Results. 
Mark, I am sorry if you have noticed this already, but when I type only the word flat into either Google or YouTube, I no not longer get flat earth in the automatic drop-down search results. Before, Flat Earth was the first thing on that list. It is no longer. The powers have tweaked something. Flat Bush Zombies comes up first. Flat Earth is fifth on the list in Google only when you type the E for Earth and the actual phrase Flat Earth does not come up by itself in YouTube. Uh, Flat Earth Girl, Flat Earth 2018 come up, but not Flat Earth by itself. As Rob Skiba likes to say from the 90s pop song, things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, but, but I don't really type in... I mean, yeah, I do type in Flat Earth in, into uh, uh, Google and YouTube. But when I'm in Google, normally just to check the, the algorithms, I type in Earth. So like type in Earth or is the or Earth is and see what happens there. Should still be flat. Because we're all over the place. We're the new hotness. We're still, the, we're not even the new hotness. We're still hot. Uh, this one's called Genesis 1. Mark, I have had many questions about the control of information both by the government and religious organizations both claiming truth i started looking for truth five years ago i became uh, began researching modern astrophysics and comparing information to the scriptures this eventually led me to some youtube videos created by you eric debay and others that mirrored the thoughts i was having and really developing the ideas further the religious organization i am part of believes without doubt that the bible is the inspired word of god and is accurate in any context or field, I'm watching your channel as well as others. I've seen many scriptures used in building the case for a flat earth. However, I haven't seen, although I may, boy, he uses a lot of parentheses here. I may not have found it yet. Any reference to the first chapter of the first book of the Hebrew scriptures, Genesis chapter one states that the creation of earth happened in the first three days, seas, land, vegetation, light, and the sun and the moon were created in day four. Whether the creative days are figurative, there you go. How long is a day in God's world? That's, that's basically no squeaking, cat. Seriously. No. No, no, no. I'm busy. Busy. Okay? You've got food. You're not going out. Again, I just brought you in. All right. Uh, whether the creative days are figurative or literal, doesn't that mean the Earth is older than all the stars, moon, and even the sun? Uh, technically, yeah, it, it would be if the if the sun and the moon were, were created later. Absolutely. If you have any reference to time to respond, I would appreciate your thoughts here. Just trying to find the truth. Thanks, John. Yeah. Yeah. What are the days in Genesis? That's an old argument, though. What are the days? You know, seven days. You know, what What is a day? And, and if time is infinitely relative and I don't want to start getting into that now, uh, then a day could be a very, very long time. Now, as far as our days are concerned, kind of compare it to like dog years and cat years, human years, God years, God days. Uh, it, sorry, it's Sunday morning. I'm not, I'm not getting into this too much. Uh, plus there's not enough time. I only got I don't know, seven or eight minutes left on this thing. So this one's called no subject. Mark, there are some things I'd like to discuss with you regarding your research. I'm not offering any proofs or answers, only perspective in hopes that you will further understand your questions. Uh, yeah, if anyone, sorry guys, if you're going to send, don't send me cliffhangers. It's one of my, not necessarily a pet peeve. It's just, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do much in ways of responding. Don't say, I'll tell you some great stuff. If you just email me back, it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you two or three things in your household kitchen. That'll kill you dead. If you're not careful after weather and sports, no, no, no. You, you don't get to bait me like that. Just send me whatever you got don't ask me or say i want you to respond first before don't just send me what you got and i get a lot of emails this one's called communication satellite hello mark i am a satellite communications engineer and i work with tracking parabolic antennas and ships oil tankers cruise ships etc i viewed a couple of your videos on flat earth but cannot find where you elaborated on satellites because i didn't I heard you mention they aren't real or high altitude balloons or even fiber for the life of me. I'm still trying to wrap my head around if these satellites are fake, then what do tracking antenna targets at track? We are taught communication satellites are placed in the geosynchronous orbit 22,000 miles above the equator. These satellites move in the same speed and direction as the Earth's rotation. They are spaced two inches about, which is about two miles apart. They also operate for 10 to 20 years or until position thrusters run out of fuel. Please provide more details in your explanation. Thanks. And I think this flat earth concept is extremely interesting. That's from Chris W. Uh, yeah, Chris. Satellites again. Look it up. Just type in flat earth satellites. 
All right, let's find one to end on here pretty soon. Uh, let's see. Oh, that one's a little long. Sorry if they're too long. I just can't. I can't read them. This one's called "It's Bothered Me for Twelve Years." Mark, I was living in Manhattan at the time, and one night I just looked up at the moon, and I asked myself. Why is there a ball in the freaking sky that supposedly happened out of nothing and that no one finds it weird at all? I'm thinking outside the box, I like it. I haven't viewed the moon the same sense. So regarding solar eclipses, the math doesn't match reality. Let's take the numbers science gave us and knock them down to inches, feet, and miles. The science moon circumference, well, I'm going to round for you guys, 6,700 miles. Our moon circumference, 6,700 miles or inches or, oh, he's converted everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically he's, he's saying the moon shadow cast on Earth during the eclipse is 70 miles. Yeah, yeah, distance from Boston. Yeah, so in effect, science says that a sand by the way. Yeah, I, I know what you're, I can't read this on, on the air though, because there's too many numbers and it's going to confuse people. But he's questioning that, um, the eclipse shadow. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And that is, the, if the, if the world, if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, why is it casting a 70 mile wide shadow? And they say, well, it's condensing the shadow. It's a convex lens for, for light. And it's, it's the blackout zone is only 70 miles wide. I'm going, okay, if that's the case, then the same thing works for the earth. Because remember the eclipse works the other way too, right? So the earth goes in front of the sun and casts a shadow on the moon. And that should also be, you know, this, this focused lens. And if you do that, then, you know, the same math applies. Then that shadow, the blackout zone, zone should be 200 and something miles wide on the moon, right? Which would be about the 10th, well, not even a 10th of the size. Uh, it'd be more than the 10th of the size. So you'd be able to see it. It'd be really obvious. And yet the, the shadow we always see on the moon is just this giant curved shadow and some you know the blood moon we don't see this blackout zone so interesting interesting um this one's called flat earth clues hi mark i'm new to the flat earth theory i've just watched the flat earth clues part one wow i am curious he wrote me after clue one i am curious as to whether you have watched the when we left the earth and moon machines documentaries regarding the moon landing very informing and providing good explanations debunking of moon ludding hoax moon ludding oh he forgot. How did you pull that off? L A O oh, because spell checker. So he typed in landing, but he left out the N and the spell checker turned it into la and then space and then ding. I have never seen that before. How weird. I will. What is. I think there's a key missing. I will go to contact. Wow. To watch your flat earth documentaries with interest regards. Michael Aspen and Mike get a new keyboard. Or spell check this. Well, more than spell check. Read your freaking emails. All right. Let's see if we can end on something fun. This one's called Professor Picard. Hi, Mark. Have you ever heard of this man as the first eyewitness of the flat earth back in 1931? Yes, I have. Uh, it just blew my mind to me. This is the video that no one can refute. Might you be able to share it with others on your webpage somewhere? Yeah, um, there's Professor Picard and his flat earth discovery. Thank you for your enclosed world webpage. It's a good gold mine of information i'm sharing it with whomever i think will appreciate it keep up the wonderful work mark most sincerely gwen thank you gwen it's very nice of you uh will i end on that one let's try this one try this one maybe this is a good one and this one's called curvature hi mark i have started to pay more and more attention to the subject of flat earth i came across the formula to calculate curvature maybe i have trust issues but i need to see if it was accurate i decide on the example of taking a plane flight from the north pole to the equator based on a twenty-four thousand mile circumference my flight should be six thousand miles quarter of the way around i draw a circle to illustrate the flight and see the total wait i've already got this one i've already i've already done this maybe I nope nope you've already you sent me this twice I am not ending this one. This is called Interview from Coast to Coast and Question. Hey, Uncle Mark. All right. This, <laughs> yes, I call you that when I comment on your videos. First, this and my name are okay for live on the emails shows. I was hoping to check out your interview with Coast to Coast. I've listened to all your interviews religiously, and I do what you say not to and actually go to bed listening to them, and I end up having the strangest dreams. Well, yes, of course, because strange... No zippers. No. Be good cat. All right. Better. 
uh, even sometimes with you and Patricia. Anyway, my question was about SETI. I mean, obviously, I've been a flat earther since 2015, so I know my stuff and I can essentially repeat all of your great points you make on the topic, but I was curious how SETI, search for extra, extra terrestrial life, works. I mean, doesn't the U.S. government pay for that? Uh, well, yes and no. Perhaps it's just a ploy, there you go, to help sell the globe idea further. Perhaps they use it to talk to the people you've been flying up there with your night vision goggles. Anyway, I'll leave you with that, and thanks for all your hard work. And that's from Paul Newhouse. Thanks, Paul. Oh, uh, boy. More, another survival guide. Hello, listening to your broadcast. I would like a copy of your survival guide. Thanks, William Teft. Yep, sent one to him. Oh, boy. We've got to find a good one. Oh, this one's too big. Too big. Uh, it's got Genesis and Enoch in it. Sorry. Um, okay, we'll end on this one right here. You ready? This is, this is going to be the last one of this show. Uh, this one's called Come On Baby, Do the Locomotion. Hi, Mark and listeners, except for the trolls. Here's an idea for a motion test I've been pondering and would be interested in seeing the results of. Have a runner or track star race the distance of a 60 to 70 feet inside of an enclosed and moving passenger train car. The train should be traveling at least 50 to 70 miles an hour, ideally. The race would be done on level ground. The race would be done twice, once towards the direction that the train is traveling and once against the train is traveling. From my experience traveling on trains, planes, subways, buses, I expect the race times will show that the runner's time and speed will be measurably faster racing against the direction the train is traveling. You know, that's interesting. The results of the test will prove that even in an enclosed system where the air is traveling with the train car, the same we are taught that the atmosphere is traveling, that the motion can and should be able to be detected. The motion, If the motion is detected by the test, which can be done at different speeds and with diff different runners, imagine what would happen during this test if Earth truly was a globe spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. This test should show that the Earth does not move. Maybe someone out there can make this test happen. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Interesting test. So you clear out a train car or, me, or or have a rail car that's open to where you can run. I don't know how long a train car is. And you have them run or have two train cars connected together. It's going to be tricky. Have the train car moving and then you run you know, as fast as you can one direction and then fast as you can the other direction. Of course, it's got to be going east-west, right? Because that's the way supposedly the earth is spinning. So, yeah. Yeah, try it out. Anyway, thanks everyone. Let's wrap this one up. For emailing me, remember you can send the emails to msergeant23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>